Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. Today we're going to report on some of the rumors and data mined information found by YouTubers Andy Reloads and X Jonathan about the Siege of Paris DLC and some of the upcoming mythological expansions for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so we really suggest you check the video out only if you are okay with this kind of content. In the video we're going to have a look at the new activities, characters, systems, missions and locations that might potentially end up in the Siege of Paris DLC before moving on to the several references to a potential mythological DLC taking place in Svartalfheim, the realm of the Dark Elves and the Dwarves in the Norse mythology, the hypothesis of even more mythological DLCs and what Odin might do within their story. If you enjoyed the video please consider liking it, subscribing to our channel and turning the notifications on so you won't miss any of our future updates. And with that out of the way, let's dive into the rumors and data mined information about the future of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So yeah, at this point it's kinda of part of the routine, lots of rumors and leaks are bound to come out during the post launch phase of the Assassin's Creed games and as it happened for Wrath of the Druids, this period is no different, so in this video we're going to discuss info about the aforementioned upcoming DLCs, while of course we suggest you check out the original videos that we are going to source in the description as they go much more in depth about what was found, so if you are a fan of this kind of content be sure to check them out. Also, upon checking this information we should always remind you that even if these entries currently appear in the game files, not all of them might end up in the final product as we expect or even appear at all, so as always we suggest you take all of this with a pinch of salt. We're going to start with Siege of Paris, and Andy Reloads through his pal Pedder was able to find out a huge load of information about the DLC, its activities, abilities, weapons, enemies, characters, mission types and of course some locations which allowed him to create a map that might be pretty close to the one appearing in the DLC. Starting with the skills, the DLC might provide at least three of them, called Idun's Heart, Thrill of War and Wolf Warrior, which according to their description will basically allow Eivor to increase health, adrenaline or damage based on specific conditions and considering their passive skills, well that's a plus in basically any situation. Then there should be three more abilities called Golden Flame, Ghoul Breath and Plague of Rats. The first one, Golden Flame, will apparently allow to attach an explosive to an enemy which will detonate after some time, and that is what we actually recently saw in the Siege of Paris teaser at the Ubisoft 4 presentation. The other two abilities will include some new poisonous arrows, which we might have already seen at Ubisoft Forward as well, and the use of rats. In fact, as slightly hinted at in some of the past rumors for the DLC, the Plague of Rats ability should allow players to coat an arrow with rat bait which will attract rats exactly where you shoot it. So as we have mentioned in our videos already, if you are a fan of a Plague Tale you might find some similar gameplay element in here too. The DLC might also feature some side activities like pig racing, as in drunken men racing against pigs, and cheese throwing. Yes, you heard that right. And also it should feature a new legendary animal with a barn bull, while there should also be some more serious side missions and activities involving the so called rebels. In fact, Andy is reporting the existence of the so-called Rebel Missions, which seems to be a side system of its own where players might be able to participate in specific missions with some so-called Rebel allies which can be chosen amidst a pool of ranged and melee focused allies. These allies might also be upgradable through a dedicated currency called Denier, which should be obtained through these missions. Apparently there will also be an infamy system tied to these missions, which sounds similar to the one already available in the river raids, where enemies might get tougher the more missions you complete, and of course a system like this will provide rewards as the players progresses through it. 
The DLC should also feature new weapons and enemies, as we already know from the post-launch trailer and the Ubisoft Horror presentation, but Andy did find some references specifically to scythes and short swords, which might be new weapon types appearing in the DLC. Of course, keep in mind that one-handed swords will seemingly be made available to everyone very close to the release date of the DLC, and we already know some of those will be made available specifically in the DLC as well. More specifically, we might also get to wield some specific legendary swords tied to Charlemagne and the literature and legends surrounding him, but that may risk to be a storage spoiler, so if you are interested in that, we do suggest you check Andy's video for more information. As for the enemies, while we have seen both via concepts and through footage that there's going to be enemies on horses in Paris, Andy did share that there might be both light and heavy cavalry in the DLC, with a ram attack that they might put in place. Andy also mentioned that zealots might make a comeback, with different names of course, and these might or might not be part of the Order of the Ancients in the DLC as well. If only the concept of zealots does work really well with this scene from the presentation. Andy also shared some info about some historical characters that might end up in the DLC based on the game files, and these, they're not too spoilery because, well, they are historical characters involved with the historical siege of Paris. So we have Charles the Fat, the emperor of the Carolingian Empire at the time, who was already mentioned in the post-launch trailer, then we have Odo, the Count of Paris who historically ended up being Charles' successor as King of West Francia, and Rollo, one of the Viking leaders in the siege whom we have already met in Valhalla's main game during the Essex arc. The one character that Andy mentioned who is not usually associated with the Siege of Paris is that of Queen Richardi, who was the spouse of Charles the Fat and thus the Holy Roman Empress. Now we may not really know if she'll end up in the DLC, but an interesting legend surrounding her is that despite being a virtuous wife, her husband continued to accuse her of misconduct until she finally assented to an ordeal by fire where the flames never once touched her, so we might witness something like that in the DLC. Another legend associates her with bears as she was seemingly able to bring a bear cub back to life, and as a potential reference to this legend, Andy mentioned that there might be a bear mount that players might obtain in the DLC. And lastly, Andy was able to not only find but also chart several potential locations from the DLC that allowed him to define a very likely map of what we might find in the final product, which, as already previously mentioned by ex Jonathan, should include not just Paris but also the Normandy area, here called Evrezen, the River Seine, and the towns of Amiens and Melon amongst the most notable ones, and apparently a Lutetia Bureau too, with Lutetia being the Roman name for Paris, so as hinted at and hypothesized in our previous videos, we might indeed see a new Hidden Ones Bureau from the Roman times here in Paris. Moving on, the other big potential leak slash rumor is about the upcoming mythological DLCs that are likely planned for year 2 of the post-launch content for Valhalla, and this is where we're going to discuss some of the information shared by YouTuber X Jonathan. so of course if you'd like to know more details but in French, you can find the link to his video in the description. So, according to Jonathan, the Muspelheim DLC that he himself had leaked to the public showing it as DLC 3, and which we later sort of confirmed through the recent teaser at Ubisoft Forward, apparently might not be the third DLC for the game, judging by the game files, but the fourth one. Instead, the third one, according to Jonathan, might be about Svartalfheim, the realm of the dwarves and or the dark elves, which according to the Norse mythology should be a dark, subterranean realm featuring mines and forges. The reason for his assumption, if we got it correctly, is that there are way more mentions and entries about this realm in the game files than it happens for Muspelheim, and because of that, it looks to him that this map slash DLC might be at a more advanced production stage than the Muspelheim one. So Jonathan did share a long list of location names which we tried to gather up in groups. The first one is that of the generic slash standard locations which include a logging site, an import depot, a hot spring oasis, an armor foundry and a crystal cave. 
Then he did share a lot of locations featuring the name Milna, which might be like an area or a region of the map that features a great mine, a bridge, an island, a dam, some ruins and interestingly enough, a silica factory, with silica being a resource that appeared in Assassin's Creed Origins that Bayek used in order to activate the various pedestals in the Isu vaults scattered across Egypt. Next, Jonathan reported a lot of dwarven locations and buildings like a redistribution vault, a refinery tower, a hamlet, a mausoleum, a fortress and interestingly enough, Ivaldi's villa. Now, Ivaldi is a character that already appeared in the Asgard arc of the main game, whom in our Valhalla analysis videos we interpreted as an issue from a different group or case than the Asgardian one, and you might remember that he was the character that forged the technology that Odin used to imprison Fenrir during the Isu era. Through a specific set of choices, in the Asgard arc, Odin could free Ivaldi from his slavery, who would then actually leave to go to Svartalfheim, and more specifically under the mountains of Svartalfheim to quote-unquote free the world's riches. So if Svartalfheim does end up as a DLC and a map of its own, we might indeed witness the continuation of that story, finding Ivaldi and his villa. Next, Jonathan did share some more interesting locations. For example, we have two actual towns called Uldar and Feldar, which don't seem to bear references to the Norse mythology. Then we have an entry called Knowledge of Ymir's Flesh, with Ymir being a primordial being in the Norse mythology considered to be an ancestor to all the Jotnar and who was actually cruelly murdered by the brothers Odin, Vili and Ve. This might still just be another mythological location, but we'll see. We also have a Valkyrie Arena reference and this might obviously play into some sort of arena gameplay as we have seen in the recent games of the franchise, with groups of enemies coming at the main character, this time with a mythology layer upon it. Come to think about it, that's kind of what also happens in the Mastery Challenge mode, which is very much all framed visually and story-wise within the context of Valkyries. Jonathan did find a rune golem reference too, which actually shouldn't be part of the Norse folklore, but of the medieval and especially Jewish one. Now, very few people currently remember that the Assassin's Creed lore does feature a golem as an actual character that appeared in 2011 in the Facebook game called Project Legacy, but that was in reference to the famed legend of the golem of the city of Prague from the late 16th century, so we don't really think that's gonna be the golem location or character that we're going to see here. Finally, Jonathan did mention two more interesting locations, Mjolnir Peak, which he just pronounced without showing it, and the Sacred Tree of Idun. We kept them last as they might actually be tied to some first civilization content that has already appeared in the franchise, while Mjolnir Peak, well that should bear some kind of connection to the Mjolnir Hammer of Eden that we have seen in the main game, the secret tree of Idun does bear a bigger connection to the franchise. In fact, Idun in the Norse mythology was a goddess that took care of an orchard that produced golden apples which ensured the gods vigor and immortality and she was mentioned as far as in Assassin's Creed 2 with a glyph puzzle hinting at the fact that her golden apples were actually apples of Eden. Idun also appeared in Assassin's Creed Valhalla as one of the Isu that participated in Odin's use of the Seven Method, who reincarnated as the Seeress Gull from the Song of Glory comics, and she was also mentioned in the Jotunheim arc, as she was instrumental in the development of some of the original methods of salvation from the Toba catastrophe, and potentially she was also the creator of the Apples of Eden themselves. So yeah, if this secret tree ended up in a DLC, there might be more actual First Civilization lore tied to it. And lastly, as a final kicker, Jonathan did mention that from his research there might be up to three DLCs being released next year, with the first one being Svartalfheim in his opinion, the second one being Muspelheim and the third one which he wouldn't reveal. According to him, based on what he found in the game files, the DLCs might be based upon Odin's voyage across the realms, in order to find a way to resurrect his son Baldur, who had been killed by Loki. Interestingly enough, this episode too had already been mentioned in the main game in one of the dialogues of the Animus Anomalies. 
In fact, within the Assassin's Creed lore, the Isu Loki did kill Odin's son Baldur with missile berry poison in retaliation for Odin imprisoning his son Fenrir. This caused Odin to grieve for his son and to set himself on a journey towards quote unquote lands afar in order to find ways to resurrect his son, more or less like his mythology counterpart, which actually gave Loki and Alithia time to prepare their plan to use the Seven Method and survive the Toba catastrophe. So if this was actually the case, we might actually see Odin travel to different realms to revive his son. I just hope having a mythology coating for 2 to 3 more DLCs without ever showing the actual events in the Isu era and forcing fans to interpret the events will not feel too forced and stale at the same time. But in the end, as of now and without any semblance of confirmation on Ubisoft's side, it's absolutely too early to say, of course. And that's it for today's video, what do you guys think about this kind of rumors and leaks? Do you enjoy getting to know about them or do you usually refrain from looking at data mined information? Also, what do you think about the info shared by Andy Reloads and X Jonathan? Did you get hyped or were they like a turn off for you? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.